I signed up at Northeastern University and they accepted me on a trial basis. In the meantime, I had gotten a job at General Dynamics, at, well, it was Bethlehem Steel Company in those days. I had gotten a job at the shipyard and the shipyard was going big time, you know, building all kinds of ships and there was lots of overtime and I'm trying to go to school three nights a week and work 48 hours a week uh, at a job. And some people could do it, but I didn't have the mental capabilities to handle both. So I kept on the job. And I, I dropped out of one semester of Northeast and I dropped out and continued to work at the shipyard. And uh, four years I worked there. I met my wife there. I met her in June and I married her in November. And we, I wanted to build a house. I wanted a home of my own. So my father, being a carpenter, and myself having some aptitude in that field, uh, we bought a, I bought a piece of land here up by Cohasset High School, and we built a house. And we had a little baby boy, and one morning I went to work, and the boss called me in the office and said, Henry, uh, I know I told you that we had plenty of work here, but things are not, we've lost contracts, and not, things are not going well. I'm going to have to lay you off you and numerous others. So in 1962 this was, and the economy again at that particular time was not good. So I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I got house payments to make, I got a new baby. Uh, I, got, I, I, had no, I had no idea what I could do for work, you know. So my father said, well, you know, you got talents, you, you know how to work with tools, carpentry tools. He gave me his Union Carpenters ticket, and he said, go into Boston, the business, uh, construction business is going well in there. And I got a job at uh, Gillette, uh, at a building that they were building. And I managed to buff my way through for a while, and uh, it was good money. Of course, people around here were making three or four dollars an hour, and I was making seven or eight, you know, mm -hmm. construction work. But you know, you didn't work if it rained, you didn't work if it snowed, and uh, when a job finished, you were you know, out on, your, on the street looking for a job again. So I saw an ad at the uh, town hall here in Cohasset that they were giving the exam for postal workers. So I took the test, 13 of us from Cohasset took it, and only three passed, and I got the job. So that's how I, I, I was only gonna take it for a short period of time until I found something else to do. And I stayed 37 years. But I loved the job. I worked outdoors and I enjoyed talking to people. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a stressful job by any. Mm -hmm. That's why I stayed all that time. Help me, I'm, I'm uh, moving some furniture and I need a hand. And I'd stop what I'm doing and go in and help out. Or a lady would say, I've got, I got a prescription at the drugstore downtown and I don't have a car. Can you, when you go by, can you pick it up and, and bring it to the house to me? I do little things like that, you know. I bet you were very popular. I, I was, and people, after I retired, people would see me on the street, Henry, I wish you were back. <laughs> we miss you. You know? you know, that was a challenge, and, you know, I, I'm not a big person, but uh, Blizzard of 78, I was out in, uh, snowstorms. Of course, you know, today uh, they tell you uh, if there's snow on the, on the side on your walk and the, to a house, just don't deliver the mail because we don't want you falling down and getting hurt, you know. But I'd trudge through the snow and get the mail to the house regardless. You know? oh, At I that time to. there were six routes, mail routes, oh, so six you. carriers. But I had the job, uh, of course everybody got a day off during the week, so I would take each individual route as they, when a person would take the day off, I would take their route, so I knew all the routes in town. Five days, different route each day. It's funny because dyslexia, people usually don't have good memories. They have a hard time remembering names and numbers. But for some, I, I guess that in dyslexia, there's all kinds, you know, of various degrees. And uh, I had a memory for names and numbers. Uh, socially, you know, occasionally I'd go, my wife and I would be at a party or something, Christmas party or something like that. And somebody would say, gee, a friend of mine used to live down on South Main Street here in Cohasset and uh, moved away and I can't remember w what house it was. And I'd say, yeah, that was 324 South Main Street. Now, how did you know that? <laughs> Sometimes I knew the grandmothers and the children and the uh, aunts and uncles uh, that would come and visit. Uh, you know, I'd see mail. Of course, people wrote letters in those days. 
and now people don't write letters very often. I have four sons, I think, as I said, and they're all very, very bright. Uh, I had grandparents, a uh, grandfather that was a, a very a brilliant architect. Uh, so the, genet the genes were there, it was just that fact that I have dyslexia. Uh, I guess I'm not patting myself on the back, but I consider myself a pretty uh, knowledgeable and intelligent person, and I can converse with most people about anything, you know. Except brain surgery, I don't know anything about that.